Welcome to Journey to Justice. I'm Eiko Kosasa, your host for today. A few weeks ago, I interviewed Gwen Kim, a retired social worker and a social justice activist for over 40 years. This is part two of a two-part interview. What moves you to, to get involved in the different issues, or do you see them all linking? And it, there are certain ones that kind of, you know, because we, because quite frankly, what is it, over 35 years of my life, um, I've been involved in the movement or I've had to, what I call retreat, to, to live for another day. I've had to retreat and, um, but there are certain ones that have seem to really call out to me like one of the ones that really is was involved involvement in nuclear free and independent pacific yeah and when they did the bombing the testing in tahiti yeah we were just terry kekoulani my heart friend and I, we were just blown away. We, we are connected with Nuclear Free and Independent right. Pacific already. Yeah. But when that happened in uh, Tahiti, so Terry called, contacted me and she said, Gwen, what are we going to do? And I said, w and I'm stuck at home. I got kids and grandkids. <laughs> I got work. I just, I felt so burdened by it. But yet, I felt we can't just let this thing go. These are historic, devastating attacks on people. And the only people we have is each other. Mm -hmm. You know, from Tahiti to here, you know, mm -hmm. to Aotearoa, you know, the Pacific Rim people. And some of those people, they're way in the Kuhivis, the boonies, you know. But yet they, like, Aotearoa, you know, Tameite, right. those people getting attacked by the queen. I don't know, is, do they call her the queen? So, Mari told me they call her Elizabeth. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that, you know. So, I just, you know, you just feel and you know you can feel them. You can feel their heartbeat. And if we don't stand up together, everywhere those of us who can see and those of us who know we have that obligation it's the kuleana you have to stand up you know because you can't hide away from it and you stand with all your brothers and sisters you know who are there you know and many of whom who don't have a voice so i told terry said, Terry, call up Marion Kelly, ask her what does she think, she, does she think we should get involved? And she called Marion and Marion said, definitely, we should, we can't let this thing, this, the bombing, you know, mm -hmm. in Tahiti go, we must stand. And so then we, we organized and we formed the Hawaii Coalition Against Nuclear Testing and we marched through Waikiki and, you know, mobilized many people, mm -hmm. you know. Because you, what you do is you speak to like-minded people, yeah, wherever they are, you know, to like-minded people. Yeah, yeah. We often will intellectualize. Yeah. Okay. And then in intellectualizing, sometimes we will lose that focus, you know, of what is it we really doing it for what is it all about and y you know I remember um, I, I was very active in when I was in college I mm -hmm. was became president of my sorority I was like vice president of the gathering of the sororities I forget mm -hmm. what that was and but I remember one day I was keeping track of what was happening with Martin 
Luther King, uh -huh. and that he had a march on Selma. Uh -huh. And in Hawaii, somebody called a march on Selma to stand with Martin Luther King. Uh -huh. And so I, I said to myself, oh my God, we've got to go to this march on Selma, you know. So I went to my sorority table and I asked, tried to ask my sisters, did anybody want to go with me now <laughs> to <laughs> Eleni Palace and join this march? And everybody was so busy with their day-to-day -day lives and talking. And so then I, I said to myself, well, Gwen, nobody wants to go with you, but do you think it's important to go to this? <laughs> like, like my mother, what is it that you yeah. want to do, you know? So then I got into my beat up Volkswagen and I drove over there and I was standing by myself, you know, the other people at, we're going to go march across to the federal building and, and then I up there was this tall guy he seemed to look at and think he felt a little sorry for me you could see I was just kind of look, looked at the loss so I hooked up with him a tall black guy mm -hmm. and so I hooked up with him we went across the street to the federal building and then I told him I didn't want to get arrested so then he, when we climbed up the steps he said he told me he said if you don't want to get arrested you should go now. So then I left. But at least I went, you know, I went in the march on Selma. Now, after that, in my life, I saw many a person like how I was. Uh -huh. You know, you, you, you see them in the crowd. You see people all together, but then you see the person that's by themselves. They made a decision. Oh. on their own yeah to go so I you know if I see somebody I, I will try to consciously go up to them and talk with them because I always remember you know my first time yeah that I you know went by myself and that it was very important to me and it's important to, to, to that, that person, person. Yes. yeah and they're not alone yeah, wow. But um, it, in the end, you know, like, I do believe this, that um, we're doing it. We're doing it for reasons of love. You know, love of people, our families, other people that we see, what happens to them, you know, like now with the the mentally ill, you know, there are throwaway people, you know, like the blacks in the Saharas, you know. Yeah. Who is a throwaway person? Yeah. You know, so for people, for the land that we want to survive, you know, for the earth, I, I do believe that if you talk with people, any people in the movement, and oh, that's why I really, I really have always um, admired Bob Avakian mm. with RCP. Yeah. Because I've seen him in his leadership role remake and remake RCP so that it's not the stultified face, but understanding, you know, that, that the creative nature creativity you know, of people mm -hmm. needs to be nurtured and valued. So I've really admired seeing him provide the leadership way back when we were all in the movement mm -hmm. and there were different, I don't know, CMP, MLP, I don't know, there was like so many different right. <laughs> movement groups. That was is the one that has made maintained itself and um, 
that I was attracted to and I united with way back in the 70s, 60s. And then actually, I have mentioned this before, you know, that's where my ex-husband and I, who I have great respect for him. I have, I hold him in high honor in his um, position around um, the Pacific Rim people. Mm -hmm. And he's very well respected also for that. But he made a conscious decision to go more to nationalism, where I do uphold internationalism. And I, I am an aspiring communist. <laughs> I'm an aspiring communist. <laughs> Can you explain what you mean by internationalism? <coughs> Just to clarify. Okay, for okay. Wait, yeah, you. Um, nationalism, of course, is to put the struggle of your country or your race as the prim primary. Right. And um, internationalism is that ultimately it's like I, I think of that song imagine you know by the Beatles yeah imagine there are no um, yeah no country no yeah, walls no country on. no walls no yeah. you know all of that that's what I consider to me like the poetic version of internationalism you know no churches no no hell below us you know above just sky, right. you know, that's what I consider internationalism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I no, I, you know, and I think people to realize it doesn't mean everybody has to be the same. It's like people have different cultures, language, they do their own thing, but Beliefs. nobody has to boss other people around saying Beliefs. you gotta be all the same. Yes. Yeah. Against, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, through the majority of my uh, time when I was working, you know, and I was a unit manager, you know, a social worker, and um, the majority of, vast majority of my friends and colleagues are, you know, had really greatly different beliefs mm -hmm. in terms of religion and but I found that, you know, I respected them. Yeah. And they respected me, you know. And if we can all just come to that basic place of respecting each other as human beings and to wish and hope that each person can have the opportunity to be the best that they can be, you know, we know like how what you mentioned earlier, you know, about educational systems are so stagnated. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Well, yeah, they want everybody to be the same. It's almost like, yeah, education wants everyone to think the same. And to me, I, that's why I don't like, like I keep saying, it's like American ideology, you know? Yes. And America knows best for the whole world. And Dumbing you down. Yeah. It's a dumbed yeah. down yeah. process. And that is, my gosh, people have so much potential if yeah. they can just be unleashed. Yeah. And we can recognize that, you know. Yeah. Um, Why do you say you're an aspiring communist? Because of this more egalitarian way of life, I mean, viewpoint, is that, you know, you, you were saying you're inspiring. Because I have not given up my um, personal, um, I, know, I know people who have really given up a lot and stood for this concept or from each according to his ability, to each according to his need. They've given up having children, families. I 
you know, I have my children, I have my grandchildren, I have my piece of property here, you know, in Ka'ava, and I, I'm not quite there where some people are, you know, where they really will put the movement and others, you know, first. Me, it is true, you know, you get pulled, pulled by your children, mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. you know, by um, need to survive, you know. Those things do, I, you know. So that's why I'm in a spot. I wish I could give up more, but <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could do more, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, like, right now, that's why this interview is so interesting to me because I looked, I've looked, I'm right now, I'm looking, I've retired for four months. My first try of my life was one thing. Then my second try, you know, was quite something else. The next 30. Now I'm looking at my last try of my life, mm -hmm. you know. And then the, that question, oh, naughty okay. You have to <laughs> hit her away because she is very aggressive. But my um, third try, you know, the first Two months of my retirement, I just slept for two months. <laughs> then, then oh, I was so exhausted. You know, you just go yeah. to work and you come home and you have, and you just do, do, do. And that's what I said. I felt like I was just do doing. You know, yeah. just it. And then this last two months, I had to realize where am I in terms of the placement in my family. You know, like. Yeah. I have to realize my daughter has a primary key role. I can't be the alpha woman <laughs> in the family <laughs> when she's the mother of the children. Yeah. So then I had to do that kind of soul searching, you know. And then now, also to part of it is um, when you're in your third part, you think of what is that? The thing of you know, passing. Oh, what you want to leave to well, your it, it, children at the world? I don't know. I think more it's coming to grips with your mortality. Mm. You know, that's what's really... And then, yeah, I have a lot of stories, you know. I have a yeah. lot of experience in my life, you know. And I can see things in a certain... This MLM... Marxist, Leninism, Mao Zedong thought. It is a fabulous liberation yeah. Yeah. to your analysis of the world and how to even live your day to day. I mean, yeah. think of it at China, yeah. they, they got rid of the imperialists, <laughs> you know. Yeah. There's amazing things. Yeah. Even though there's terrible things, you know, the seeds are yeah. there that we have to look at and, and be aware of. But that is, to me, the science of the oppressed, fighting this awful serpent squid monster that's all over the world, you know, this military that's, yeah. that's destroying the whole world. So this MLM thought, if you study it, I'm telling you, mm -hmm. it is powerful. Yeah. I, Liberating. My dissertation, the main theories was Lenin. So I, wow. so I put that into yeah, the framework. So See, it is. And that's he's all he's part of oh, yes. the ideas. What yeah. is to be done. Yeah. And simple. And yet, and if you take it and you incorporate it into your life, you... Things are not like, wow, what the, what the, sh is going on? This, <laughs> you know what I mean? You don't, you know what the, what's going, yeah. And you know what the, sh you know who's doing it, you know why, you know how. So 
wow, that is a fabulous tool yeah. Yeah. to have because the shed is going to hit the fan in this next period of time. But people are coming forward. It's fascinating. Yeah. But do you feel that perspective, that understanding has helped you through all these years to keep going? Oh, I mean, because people get tired of Oh, tired. no, 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 no. That's what Terry and I, we, we've talked about. We've said, wow, we're so lucky to have learned the analysis. Because mm -hmm. that does, it helps us to figure out what's going on and why and yeah. where to go. Yeah. Where, no, but you see, you know that other part about it's, that's why I speak to that is that you have to connect from the emotional part because mm. you have to feed your spirit. Yeah. It is so hard to fight this damn monster that is blood sucking <clears throat> the future of the world and people. But that's why you got to find people and things to do that will right. feed you and they'll keep. And then yeah. don't expect too much of yourself. That's why sometimes, like I said, I've had to, I've had to withdraw mm -hmm. so that I can get a perspective. Like now, this four months thing, sleeping for two months and trying to read things and get my health back, you know. Yeah. The main thing I believe is fighting for perspective. You always yeah. have to fight for perspective and balance. And don't let this cockroaches do to on us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I yeah. mean, they're not even rats. They're like cockroaches, yeah. you know? Yeah. And we just gotta go, okay. <laughs> You're gone, yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But you have to do strategy. You have to figure out survival, mm -hmm. because the one thing I learned is you must protect yourself so you can live on yeah. to fight another day. You know. Yeah. And then hui up with like-minded people, like-minded yeah. projects, you know. Yeah. Like, oh, the striker was really quite something this last time because, you know, I don't know if you, did you hear when I was talking to oh, Marion's, was that... No, I had left by... Okay, because um, I remember Terry, I know Kyle, you know, and yeah. We were talking about, oh my God, this is the, this is the huge takeover, you know, this is like from the queen and all of that, that land takeover, they, they took Pearl Harbor, they took all the military bases mm -hmm. and everything, the ones we never see or know of, you know, because, right. and then, oh, I'm sorry, they let us in to have their what is it, the one they have Marine Corps Air Station every now and then, they let us into what, their carnivals. Oh, And then yeah. sometimes we can bring our children to the school and climb all over the tanks, you know, and, and then they do cleanups, you know, and they do these things. But this was the biggest takeover of land in current times for the striker, yeah, the striker right. brigade. Do you know nobody knew what we nobody knew what was striker? And we talked about it, we said, My God, this is the biggest land grab yeah. by the military yeah. to do their whole uh, command of the Pacific, Pacific Rim Command, and they're just gonna do it. And nobody's yeah. gonna make a peep. We're just gonna Okay. We'll do it, you know, jobs, whatever. You know, people not really understanding what is the big perspective 
about this most recent yeah. military takeover. So, oh God, you know, it's really hard for me to come from here to go all the way into town. And we said, why are they having all these hearings at private venue? Right. They've always had the public hearings at public venue, the schools and stuff. Every one of these were at private venue. Um, Country Club, Turtle Bay, you know, etc. Yeah. So we didn't, couldn't quite figure it out. So I got myself dressed. I went and got in the car. Nobody go. I'm going to drive over there by myself all the way up to Salt Lake, you know, Country Club. And I come driving in, you know, and I had my little testimony. There was, and then right at the gate, they said, like June. And other people said, oh, they're not letting us in with our signs into the hearing. And we said, what? You mean public hearing? We cannot have signs. <laughs> so that was when Kyle got arrested, um, Buck Dong, Steve Toyama, mm -hmm. myself. We got arrested because they said, I said, give me that sign, you know, and I don't want to lose my job. <laughs> I'm, I'm taking care of my family. I'm a single grandparent, you know, and, but then when I heard that, what? So I said, give me that sign. So I, I thought, how dare they? How dare they try to shut us up? They have all this power. And now they're going to take this away from us too, that we can't even bring in a <laughs> damn sign to say, I don't want no strikers. So I held that sign and there were these huge Samoan guards and everything all around me. And then they're saying, back up, back up. And I thought to myself, I said, you're here protecting the military against us? You need to be here. You need these big guys. You need to be here to protect the military against us. So, you know, for the life of me, I could not back up. It was just, it said something inside yeah. of you that I, you, I could just not back up. So then they said they're going to arrest me. And <laughs> I couldn't. Yeah. So then they did, you know, arrest me. And that was, that arrest was about three or four years ago. It was in Noho Heva. Yeah. You know, and, oh, afterwards I thought, oh my goodness, am I still going to have a job? <laughs> no. But there's certain, sometimes I knew in my heart, no matter what, I have to, we'll have to eat the stones. We are, n there are certain times in your life you cannot back down, you yeah. Know. Yeah. And you must go forward. I told him, I said, you know, Sparky, I said, sometimes we miss opportunities. But with this system and how vicious it is, it's going to give you another <laughs> opportunity <laughs> later on. So when that opportunity comes, Take, Take it! it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm serious, you know what I mean? Because in my life, you know, I, there's been times when we think, oh darn, why didn't we do this? Or darn, why? But then I just came to that point of, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> and then just ready yourself Yeah. Yeah. for that time when it does. Ready yourself. Yeah. You know, yeah. so then you can give the best blow possible <laughs> because there's timing. It's timing. You know how yeah. it, it's amazing how much timing affects things. You yeah, know? yeah. So just you know, you learn, you learn, sensitize yourself. Yeah, and then. They're going to do you. it again. They're going to try step on our face again. <laughs> and let me you tell count you, on it. that's the one thing you can <laughs> count on is like how more than taxes is going to come again. Yeah. <laughs>